Another unnecessary Phillies ending. But the bottom line is 8-7. Phillies take it over the hapless Pittsburgh Pirates. Ben Davis, I'm Michael Barkan. We welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. We go right back to Pittsburgh to check in with Tom and Ruben with an interview, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Derek Hall joins us down on the field. Hey, pretty sweet swing there in that first inning. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got around the cutter there. Hey, did you think he got it? Did you think he was out of the ballpark? Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was going to go. I mean, I looked up when I got back to the dugout and I saw a little bit of breeze going to left, and I was like, <laughs> maybe that was just enough to hold it in. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Derek. Uh, we look at the game of baseball is such a great artistic game in so many levels. I mean, this turned out to be a one-run game. Yeah. Every run was important tonight, including those two you drove in in the first inning. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the more runs, the better in, in every game. <laughs> yeah. Derek, does it help you focus even more because there is a race going on? I mean, is that at all part of it, or is it? do you not even look at it that way? No, absolutely. I, I think that, especially in the big leagues, everything matters. Every little thing, the little things, the big things. So anytime you uh, get a chance to help the team or, you know, do something with the bat, I, I think it, it pays huge dividends. Hey, uh, uh, Derek, what, what's the feeling in the in the dugout in the clubhouse when on a day like uh, when, when Zach Wheeler's pitching? I mean, Zach and, and Nolos, Knowles have been so consistent. Is there a different feel in the clubhouse when you guys are getting ready to go? Yeah, I, th I think when those boys pitch, we just need to score runs because they're going to do their job, and we just need to do ours and, and uh, give them those Ws. Well, we appreciate you joining us tonight, Derek. It's always great talking to you. How about the uh, live audience in front of you? What's going oh, on over there? They've been awesome. <laughs> Got some love there. A lot of Phillies fans here. A lot yeah. of Phillies fans here. <laughs> hey, listen, thanks, Derek. Uh, we'll talk to you again down the road. Yeah, thanks nice for having going. Me. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Derek Call, our guest. Uh, good win for the Phils. Tight win for the Phils. I didn't think, Michael and Ben, you'd have a whole lot to talk about beyond Zach Wheeler, maybe the Phillies offense, but I guess you got some other things you could talk about. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know Tommy. We'll, we'll try to drum up something. <laughs> we'll, get back, <laughs> we'll get back to Ruben in a moment. Ruben, have your shield up in a second. No, a win is a win, and that's the bottom line. And we thank you, Ben Davis. Give, give me your thoughts on this, because really, um, Fans will look at it like, are you kidding me? 8-7, they win this game after being eight up 8-0, eight then 8-2, Wheeler gives up a home run that turned out to be nothing. Uh, but four, five runs charged to Jury's Familia makes it way too tight for comfort. Yeah, five runs all earned, and obviously you don't like to see that. Uh, it's been an up-and-down roller, roller coaster for Jerry's Familia this season. I know he's getting $6 million by the Phillies, but that ERA climbing all the way up to six after get, having given up those five earned runs. Uh, I, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it seems like no lead is too safe with him right now, and, and that's a shame because the, it kind of took the luster out of this ball game, everything they did well, the performance by Zach Wheeler, the timely hitting by the, by the offense, 5 for 11 with runners in scoring position. The top of the lineup, 1 through 5, went 10 for 20 with 7 RBIs, Michael. That's called getting it done. Uh, it kind of takes a little bit of the luster out of those, those performances, and it's a shame because it was – just one of those games where the Phillies did everything right. They played good defense. Uh, it was just really that hiccup there in the ninth. Back to Pittsburgh. We check in with Ruben Amaro Jr. Call tonight's game as you saw with Tom McCarthy. Ruben, when you look at this, uh, my big concern is, look, a win's a win. They've now won two straight, three of four, six of ten. That's a good thing. Hopefully they will sweep the Pittsburgh Pirates. So that's all well and good. But you give a team hope. This Pirates team, I mean, let's be honest, they stink. They're among the worst teams in baseball and the worst offensive team in the National League. So you give them a little hope at the end of this game concerning it all for tomorrow and the rest of the series. Well, I think it's a little concerning, but uh, but again, you're right. Uh, wins a win, and we can't let one poor performance uh, bring this this thing down. I mean, they won the ball game. They did what they were supposed to do. They scored early for Zach Wheeler. Zach was phenomenal again. Uh, just love the way he's been pitching and how consistent he's been over the course of the last couple of years. Uh, again, uh, one of the best pitchers in, in, in all of baseball as far as I'm concerned. And they played very good defense behind him. Um, I think generally they, they ran the bases pretty well. A couple of a couple of mishaps there um, as far as knowing the outs uh, there at times, but it didn't really cost them. But um, when they're playing decent defense and, and they're getting timely hitting, 
And uh, as Ben said, I mean, to have those guys in the front part of the lineup, and Alec Bowman's just been phenomenal. Whew. As the Phillies win at 8-7, to seven, and the Phillies now tied up with the Cardinals for that final wild card spot. But again, by virtue of tiebreak, they are in that spot. Season's not over, but if it were, they're your Phillies, the playoff <laughs> team. Uh, you know what, Ben? The further you get from a victory like this, the better you start to feel because you realize, you know what, they won the game. Yes. They could have lost it. Would have been a really, really, maybe the worst loss of the season, but they didn't. They won it, and we're talking about the performance of one player, really, that stuck out, unfortunately, for juries familiar. But um, when you look at this Phillies team starting to hit the ball, uh, they've done that throughout the season, but certainly tonight, the pitching's coming around. They're looking pretty good, aren't they? They are looking good right now, Michael, and the, the approach tonight it's one thing to have an approach but if you don't carry out that approach to an at bat or a course of a ball game you're not going to have the results that you that were intended the, the approach tonight was obvious to me. Stay in the middle of the diamond. We saw Reese Hoskins hit an opposite field double to right field. We saw Schwarber early on that ball game hit a bullet up the middle. Obviously, uh, Alec Bohm and Castellanos hit a couple balls the opposite way. It was a, a concerted effort to stay in the middle of the diamond. And I know that Thompson throws a lot of cutters, and it seems like the lefties, he was trying to get that underneath the hands of the cutters. But it seemed like they were staying inside it enough to hit it up the middle or use the whole field. We saw Stott hit a bullet straight away shortstop, but with the shift, it goes down as a single. It was the approach that I was really fascinated with tonight, and I hope that's something they can stay with because I think in this lineup, this particular lineup, a lot of these guys get so pull happy that it, it, that approach evades them sometime. It gets away from them, and they get into some funks. But with the approach that I saw tonight, that, that produced a lot of hits. When you look at the lineup, when Bryce Harper comes back, Gene Segura comes back, and you talk about lengthening the lineup, mm -hmm. and it gives this team, this roster, depth. How's it going to look, do you think, when Harper comes back in the middle of August? And Segura could come back way earlier than that. He's eligible to come off the DL on uh, the IL on Sunday. Yeah, Gene was down in, in Lehigh Valley getting some ABs again. Uh, this is it's a star-studded lineup, and obviously the, the best thing about the, the two guys that you just mentioned, and Segura and Harper, is the fact that it's not going to take neither either one of those guys a lot of time to get back in the quote-unquote swing of things because his Segura's hand-eye coordination is off the charts. That that dude when He's 60 years old. He's going to be able to roll out of bed and hit a bullet over the second baseman's head. And Harper is Harper. He's the, the reigning MVP. There's nothing the dude can't do. Uh, he's having another tremendous year. Unfortunately, obviously, this injury is going to sideline him for a bit more. But he's the kind of guy that doesn't need a whole lot of time to get back in the swing of things. He is that consummate professional. He knows himself. He knows his swing. And he's got a great eye. And that goes a long way for him to getting back to be exactly where he needs to be. Let's, uh, let me get your thoughts on Nick Cass. I saw some remarks on Twitter saying don't anoint him as a stud yet because he had a three hit game against a triple A lineup or a triple A team uh, in the Pittsburgh Pirates. But when you do see three hits for him tonight and an RBI for him tonight and a run scored as well, how much can that get him off the schneid? Well, I think it definitely can help him. We saw him early in the season have a four hit game uh, and it kind of got him going a little bit. I still think and I know that the Phillies are looking for a little bit more damage. They need some more thump out of his bat, some extra base hits, a few more RBIs. I mean, he's stuck on eight home runs right now, Michael. And as long as he's getting hits, I can live with that. As long as you're getting your knocks, and that's why I, I love Alec Bohm right now, because he's getting hits. No, he's not hitting for a ton of power, but like I said in the pregame show, give me that hitter first. I want a hitter first, the power numbers later. And because hits, they really never go into slump. Good hitters don't go into good slumps because they continue to get those hits. Maybe it's only one a game or whatever, but they continue to get those. And it, it, it's, it's something I think the thump isn't there right now. Obviously, they, they hope it's there. We talked to, to Rob Thompson in, in uh, St. Louis. He says, we expect more slug out of, out of Castellanos, and we hope we can get it soon. More slug out of Castellanos. Don't be a slug. We want more slug. All right, Zach Wheeler, what a performance tonight. He had a strong one against the Cubs, just a one-run uh, performance against Chicago, his last outing. And then tonight looked like it was going to be scoreless. Unfortunately, in the seventh, gives up a two-run shot. But seven innings pitched, three hits allowed. That's it. Two earned runs, a home run, eight strikeouts to three walks and 97 pitches. His ERA goes down just a skosh to two. 7-7. Seven, seven. Zach Wheeler looks like he's going to be Cy Young material again, even though he failed to make the All-Star team. Yeah, he was good. At, and I wouldn't say, Michael, that he let his guard down. But I think he knew in the kind of the back of his mind that this was going to be his last inning, that seventh inning. Unfortunately, he did give up that two-run home run. 
But, you know, I'm sure he'll say, no, I didn't let my guard down. But there's, if you're, if you're kind of knowing that you're coming out of the ball game and you got a, a real big lead, maybe you don't put as much conviction in each pitch. Maybe it got the best of them. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I'm just making that up. But I think that definitely plays into it. Mm-hmm.